Well, praise the Lord and welcome to the Bible Heritage Pentecostal Holiness Church. This is Pastor Randy Richardson, and we're going to continue tonight in the book of Thess- 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 2 through 5. The Lord will deliver you from wicked men. Remember in verse 1, he uh, challenged of chapter 3, Paul directed the believers to pray for their leaders, that the gospel would, would spread swiftly and with ease. Now he adds to those instructions that they also needed to pray to be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. So he, he has a second part of this prayer, and that is that they are to pray that they would be delivered. Now, that word delivered there means to rescue, to rescue. Do you know you and I are living in a time when we need to be rescued from evil and, and uh, wicked men? Um, why? What, 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 what's, what's going on? Well, the Bible tells us clearly in Ephesians 6, 16, he says, Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, he's talking about uh, demonic influences that uh, pop into our mind, that uh, fall into our uh, uh, laps, uh, that, that we fall to easily, traps of the devil. But it also includes men. Do you know that sometimes some men are so evil they're casting them out of devils? (laughs) Well, the truth of it is that that's really not true, but but the truth of it is there are some people that are so full of the devil that they become your enemy. It's not even that person, but it's the devil in that person that hates the God in you. And so you have to pray against these fiery darts that come from men. You say, well, it's hard enough to fight the devil, these unseen forces that are in the world. But I'm here to tell you that there are real people, flesh and blood people that uh, we fight against. And he gives two types of people. He first describes them as unreasonable men. And uh, when we think about somebody that's unreasonable, it's somebody that you can't talk to. Uh, Well, in the actual Greek, it's unrighteous men. And certainly unrighteous men are unreasonable too. But unreasonable men, unrighteous men, and wicked men men you say well well where where are these wicked people they're everywhere they're everywhere you go there are people that are influenced by the enemy to attack you i even believe sometimes that that the devil can use godly people to attack you you say oh that's impossible no if a christian lets their guard down and their emotions are let loose to go any old which way they want to go, we are like in neutral, and the enemy can push us and prod us into any direction he wants us to go if we're not yielded to the Lord and leaning on the Lord and trusting in the Lord, uh, then we are, my friend, easily persuaded or influenced by the enemy. I think there's been times when the enemy has used me against my own wife. There's been times where maybe because I was tired, because I was ill, because of the pressures of life and things that were going on that I chewed my wife's head off about something that I should have been more gracious about or more patient about or or something that got on my nerves that shouldn't have got on my nerves. Um, And then I took it out on her. And she would say to me, you're full of the devil. 
<laughs> and I would think, no, I'm Holy Ghost filled. And, and then it would dawn on me, I'm not acting like a Holy Ghost filled man. I'm acting like an unrighteous man. And so the, the enemy of your soul can use even godly people to come against you. Now, does that mean that I was demon-possessed? No, but I was influenced by my lack of Bible reading, my lack of prayer, my buildup of problems, my, my cares that I didn't cast on the Lord, and I was carrying the load myself and not giving it to God. And then, yes, in a weakened spiritual state, you can be used by the devil influenced by the devil but never possessed by the devil so get that uh, distinction down clearly the devil uses people even in church to get next to us he'll use a person that their personality rubs you the wrong way or maybe I say something that, that, that doesn't agree with you or whatever and the devil just magnifies it and blows it all out of proportion you know, the, the enemy is, is quick at, at uh, uh, being busy about seeking whom he may devour. And he's not trying to devour his own. He's trying to devour you and I who are believers. So demonic influences can work through people. In fact, most of the time, it's people that bother me the world doesn't bother me it's the people in the world it's the legislatures it's the senators it's the president it's Congress it's the local government it's the people that make the rules it's people in your neighborhood it's people you work with it's people that you're married to <laughs> or your children, or your parents. It could be a host of anybody. But the devil uses them to get to you. So you've got to be alert, and you've got to become mentally and spiritually aware that the enemy uses them, and then you're on your guard. Well, verse 3, he says, But the Lord, I like that word, but. He gives us some bad news that people can be used of the devil, but here comes the good news. The Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Thank God he is faithful. Forevermore he is faithful. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. I love that song because the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God has been evident in my life for all of my 63 and 9 tenths years on this earth. But the Lord is faithful who will... Not he might, but he will establish you. That's get you settled. When everything's in chaos, when everything's up in the air, when everything doesn't make sense, when everything seems to be driving you crazy, when everything's getting on your last nerve, that's when God says, I'll come in and I will establish you. I'll settle you you down thank God for the Holy Ghost because I can be in an absolute tizzy and if you don't know what a tizzy is you've not lived here very long because <laughs> the devil can get you in a tizzy that's when you just you don't even know your head from a hole in the ground uh, that's a tizzy and uh, the Lord can get you settled when your emotions are all over the place, when your mind is all over the place, when your spirit man is all over the place, God said, I'll settle you down. 
Praise God. When the enemy comes in like a flood, what does the Bible say? He said, I'll raise up a standard against them. So we can expect that God will establish his saints if we'll just trust him. And then he says, he'll guard you. Thank God he builds a hedge around us. Job, the devil accused God. He said, uh, why does Job trust you? It's because you got a hedge around him. Well, thank God for the hedge of protection. Thank God that God does build hedges around us and protects us when we yield to the Lord. Well, who are we guarded from? We're guarded from the evil one. That's Satan and all of his troops. That's imps or devils or demons or whatever you want to call them, evil spirits. Those forces that are coming against you as a child of God. And then he says in verse 4, and we have this confidence in the Lord. It's not confidence in our denomination. It's not confidence in the pastor. It's not confidence, confidence in the local church or the conference. It is confidence in the Lord. I love our bishop. I love our national bishop. I love all of our officials in our denomination. They're godly men and women, and I'm so thankful that I get the opportunity to work with some of them, and they're just wonderful people, but my trust is not in them. My trust is in the Lord. I looked at my phone today, and uh, I had missed about six calls today. I don't know why. I must have been in an area where I didn't have reception or... I was counseling a, a person and, and uh, praying for a person to be loose from the enemy, and so maybe the Lord was just shutting my phone off so it wouldn't interfere with that deliverance prayer that we were praying over that person. But, uh, folks, I'm here to tell you that, that sometimes you may call me and I may be on the other line. I may be out of area. I may be in an area that's roaming and, and there's no service there. And uh, if you're depending on me, then you're going to be out of luck. And the truth of it is, is I'm limited in my resources. I only have a pea for a brain. And I've only got just a, a, a nickel's worth of energy. So if you're looking for something from me, you're not going to get very much. I'll give you all I got. But the truth of it is, is I have to point you to the strength that comes from the Lord. The Lord is our strength and our, our, our shield. He is our protection. He is our everything. Hallelujah. We have confidence in the Lord concerning you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Confidence in the Lord concerning you. Praise God. Both that you do and will do the things we command you. Did you know one of the greatest defenses from people and from the enemy is walking in obedience to this word? If you're walking in obedience to this word, then you have defeated the enemy 99.9%. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Isn't that what the word says? Obedience to the word of God will keep you from evil. It'll keep you from evil people. It'll make you make the right decisions. It'll make you have a sound mind. It'll make your spirit man leap for joy, run through a troop and leap over a wall and shout hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. So obedience will help you as you're dealing with ungodly and wicked men. Verse 5, Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. I don't know about you, but I need direction. I can get lost in my own neighborhood. I'm, uh, I've never been good with directions. 
um, poor uh, Brianna, she's learn, learning to drive. Braylin, she's got a mind like a road map. She can remember where things are. Uh, but Brianna, she, she gets to the corner uh, of Albany and Augusta and says, where's the church? <laughs> and we rode straight down Albany forever. But when she's driving, she loses all train of thought on, on direction. Well, she got that from me because <laughs> I'm bad. I, Alicia bought me one of those little garments that you put in your windshield and it gives you direction. It's a GPS. And I let that little lady on that uh, machine tell me to turn right, turn left. And even if it's the long way, I do exactly what that lady says because I know that if I follow her directions, 99% of the time she's going to lead me the right way. Well, God will always lead you in the right way if you'll walk in obedience to his word. He will direct your hearts. Now, what is your heart? That's your emotions. I don't know about you, but my emotions sometimes get out of whack. My emotions can get angry. They can get frustrated. They can get bothered. They can get troubled. They can get worried. My emotions can go from here to there in 60 seconds or less. And I know yours can too. That's why we have to guard our minds and our emotions. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, and 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. It's important that we let the Lord give us guidance on how to get through life's difficult moments. It's important that we let the Spirit of the living God teach us how to go right or left. If we'll listen, just listen to the Lord. The Lord will guide us and direct us on what we're to say and what we're to do. I was counseling someone this week and the Holy Spirit, I had no idea what to say to this person. Not one thought came to my mind. I had no time to prepare. It was thrust upon me at a moment's notice. And so I had to depend on the Lord. And the Bible even promises us that when we go before the enemy that he will fill our mouths with what we need to say. And so it's important that we stay filled with the Holy Ghost so that when we face those situations, the Lord can bring back to our minds the Word of God. He can bring back stories uh, and, and that we've heard, that we've lived through. And God just brought one thing after another thing after another thing, and it just seemed like everything that I was talking about was hitting home with the individual that I was ministering to. And that was a God thing. That was a God thing. That was not a pastor thing or a Randy thing. That was a God thing. So we trust in the Lord, and he guides us with his eye. Praise God, his eye can see far ahead. It sees what's behind. It sees what's in front of us. It sees what's sneaking up on right, the right or left. He knows everything. He can make crooked paths straight, streams in the desert, and he can do what no man can do. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But he says he will direct your hearts into the love of God. You know, when I was just a little boy, I would, uh, I remember we were walking down Jacksonville Beach on the boardwalk, and I, as usual, was just uh, running ahead of my mother and not paying attention to my surroundings, and uh, next thing I know, I'm probably about 50 feet ahead of my mother, and just got scared all of a sudden. I must have been five, four, five years old, but I remember it as if it happened yesterday. And I remember reaching up to grab my mother's hand, and there was a hand there, but it wasn't my mother. It was some other woman. 
And I'm just a little boy, and I look up, and I said, you're not my mama. And my mother's back there just dying laughing because she said, I told you to stay nearby. And see, you needed me, and you, you were out of, out of range. Well, that's what happens with us with the Lord. We get out of range with the Lord. And because we're out of range with the Lord, we get in a crisis, and we need him, and we're so far away that we're, we're crying, Lord, Lord, where are you? And it's like, well, I didn't move. You moved. Get back to where you belong, and then I'll be right there to help you in the love of God. We just need that comfort of the love of God. Sometimes when we're going through life's hellish moments, hellish days, hellish weeks, months, and years even, we can yield to the love of God. Lay back in the love of God. Rest in the palm of His hand and be assured that His love will see us through. Romans 12, 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, not only should you uh, pray now, may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, but into the patience of Christ. I don't know about you, but I need patience. I need patience. I'm, I'm uh, almost 64, and I still am not there yet. And I'm still working on me. I'm still asking the Lord to work on me. And so I need patience. And the one that has the most patience and the best patience, his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus can help you with patience. If you'll run into his arms, he'll help you through those wicked men and deliver you with patience. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes evil people can get on your last nerve and you feel like just coming unglued on them. You just want to sock them one or you just want to tell them off or whatever it might be. But then the Holy Ghost comes on you and says, Nope, keep your mouth shut. Don't even think what you're thinking. And then the Spirit of God overwhelms you with His goodness and His love and His grace. And then you're able to deal with the situation at hand. I need help with patience. And the patience comes from Christ. Do you need help tonight? Have evil men been bothering you in, in some fashion or form? Well, it's time to yield to the Lord. Let's do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we yield ourselves to you anew and afresh. And we say, oh, Father, do a work in us. Change us. Make us more like you. Help us, Lord, to yield to you and have the love of God and the patience of Christ to rule and reign in our hearts and in our lives. Help us, O oh Lord, to do what we need to do so we can be rescued from wicked men. Oh, we thank you that you are faithful and we yield to that faithfulness in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Starting uh, this Sunday, we want to see you in the house of the Lord and uh, be there if you're poss possibly able. If not, we will have it on uh, YouTube and uh, on Facebook. Facebook uh, uh, at 11 and then YouTube around 1230-ish, something like that, it comes on. And then uh, we want you to be next Wednesday, uh, if you're able to, in the morning service with my wife, Sister Alicia. And uh, we're going to have Bible study here in the sanctuary. And then... Uh, uh, Monday night, we're studying on the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and, and uh, we're answering all the questions and the hindrances of why people haven't received the Holy Ghost. And so if you uh, are a seeker and you want to find out more and you want to learn more about the Holy Ghost, then you'll be here on Monday nights at 6.30. And uh, then uh, at the end of September, 
We hope to start up Wednesday night services with Sister LaDonna Odom, or York. I keep forgetting her last name. It's York, and um, uh, she'll be ministering on Wednesday nights uh, after they get moved in uh, here on in the house of the Lord. So there's going to be plenty of opportunities to hear the word of God and to be stirred in your spirit. Invite people to one of those services or any of them or all of them. You're all welcome. God bless you and have a good rest of your week.